Welcome to another Blender Serpents tutorial video. I'm going to be starting a series of videos covering every one of the nodes in the Serpent add-on. And in this video, we're going to be covering one of the input nodes. And this input node here, we're going to be covering is the Boolean. So if you go to your add menu, under input, we have Boolean. And you can access it through the Shift A as well, input Boolean. And what exactly is a Boolean and why is it in the input section? Well, think of an input node as a node that you're getting a value from, or it's a getter. So it always outputs data on the right hand side to something that's going to receive data or get set like a setter. And a Boolean node will output either a true or a false value. True value when the checkbox is checked and a false value when the checkbox is unset. And you'll input it into something else and make stuff happen through the execute inside of the Serpent's logic. So it's just transferring data. It's not necessarily doing anything special besides that. Now let's see a few usage examples. So in the UI, what I've got here is I've got a panel. It's called My Category. And I have a Boolean panel set up, and it's calling a submenu from this menu called Boolean menu. Inside that menu, I'm asking for a button to be called, and it's tied into a box. I also have a sub panel over on the left hand side here. And I'm using a row node that's also calling the same bool operator as my menu. And we're mainly teaching the purpose of using a Boolean node. So UI items like menus, panels, and subpanels have a poll. And inside that poll section, what that does is it's like the gatekeeper that determines whether or not you're going to execute that class or UI item. So when the poll is set to true, you're going to execute or draw something to the screen. When it's set to false, you're going to hide it. So as I compile this, you'll notice that these things are all available. Now if I turn these defaults and recompile, they're all hidden now. Even the panel disappears even if I had it selected. So let's change those all back to true and move on to the right here. So on our sub panel, notice how it's red. Well, I'm setting into the alert section of my row. An alert will color something red if it has the ability to be colored red. So a menu item is not going to get colored red. So I could tie this into here and you'll see that even though I compile, menu items aren't going to change color. But on things like panels, they will, or buttons. Now, on my panel here, I have a true or false. So I'm displaying my submenu, which is my menu here. So if I change this condition to not be true, I still have my panel, but I'm hiding something else from the UI, like my submenu. And change it back to true, and I'll bring it back. Now I can also show something different, like maybe a label. I'll just quickly state hiding the submenu, throw into the faults. And when I turn this to faults now, you'll notice that my UI can actually change. So you can toggle UI items making use of the if else interface in a Boolean condition. So for our menu here, we have a box and we can decide whether or not to enable the menu item. So let's turn this back to true so we can see our submenu. And I can turn this to faults. And even though I can get inside of here, my item is now grayed out because the enabled has been turned to false. There's also the ability to make alignment between multiple items on a row. Um, I'm not going to cover that, but basically it will hug items together. Kind of like you see here. They'll be aligned and close together. Make up the space that they're called in. Let's see some more use case examples real quick. So inside of the operator, we also have a poll. So when you make an operator class, there is a section where it determines whether or not you're going to use the execute. And operators have execute sockets. They have an invoke and a regular operator execute. And the, the poll is going to determine whether or not that happens. And another really cool thing that you can do with this, is when you disable that polling, notice how the button itself grays out. So I can't even call that operator when the poll is set to false. So it even changes the UI for me when it's tied to a button. Re-enable that now. So now that I've got that set up on my Serpents menu, I've got it tied in. This operator is calling a run function. And inside of my run function, this is our next use case. I have an if else program node and the function has an execute. And if the condition on the Boolean is true, we're going to output through the true. If it's false, we're going to output through the false. After the inputs are evaluated, you can then continue on through the continue to more code. Whether you're true or false, this is going to continue afterwards. So I'm going to tie in 
You can tie in Boolean data onto a print node because it'll convert to strings. So I can make use of my condition and then print out what that condition is on my print node. So when I click on the button, you'll notice the bool is false because I'm accessing the data here in three different locations. I'm coming in through the if statement. If the condition is false, then I'm going to print and grab its value, which is false. Reset it to true. Click the button again and notice how the bool is true. So the Boolean node can be used for really simple applications and it allows you to visually see information on your node graph and quickly change it. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on the next one.